out of a world of beauty, excitement, and adventure, a journey to the island of Madagascar and its unique bird and animal population. This is the last retreat in the world today of man's distant relative, the tree-dwelling lemur. Madagascar, set in the Indian Ocean about 200 miles east of the African continent, is the fourth largest island in the world. It offers a surprisingly varied landscape and climate, with wet tropical coastal jungles giving way to vast interior plains and desolate mountain ranges. Great rivers such as the Betsiboka erode barren highlands during the wet summers. The pervasive color of the muddy waters and the bare laterite rock of this desolate interior have given Madagascar its popular name, the Great Red Island. Only about one-tenth of the island is now forested. Great jungles have been recklessly cleared and burned by the logging industry set up by French entrepreneurs in the 19th century and by the Malagasy themselves, clearing land for their grazing cattle. This primitive land clearing continues to this day. On the high plains, it is ecologically beneficial, burning away the dry, dead savanna of the preceding season, allowing new green growth to reach the sun. Native animal life is unusual, but limited. There are no large mammals to be found, except for domestic cattle imported by man. About 84 million acres, 57% of the island's land surface, is given over to pasture for the zebu cattle, numbering over 9 million head, raised by the Malagasy for beef, for sacrifice during religious ceremonies, and as visible proof of a man's wealth and status. also used as work animals in the production of the staple food, rice. They trample the mud fields before planting. Rice is grown throughout the island, but especially in the inland valleys around Tananarive, the main town and capital of the Malagasy Republic. The cultivation of rice is one of several skills that relate the people of this land to probable ancestry in the islands of Polynesia over 2,000 miles to the east. The climate that supports rice farming is also ideal for many varieties of bird life which are distinctive to Madagascar. There are a few of the larger birds found in East Africa, but several species which appear to have Asiatic origins. Madagascar was once the home of now extinct giants, similar to the fabled dodo of nearby Mauritius. While these disappeared long ago, more highly evolved species such as heron and cormorant will continue to thrive if man, their only serious natural enemy on the island, will leave them unharmed. Swamp bushes in which these silk herons live are now but dead supports, bearing nests of young instead of foliage.
these tropical latitudes, the annual breeding cycle is not as restricted as it is in more temperate regions of the world. And young birds are visible in the nest long past the customary breeding seasons. Food is plentiful most of the year. The birds feed on aquatic plants, insects, and microscopic animal life. Madagascar, like most oceanic islands, has few freshwater fish. After a day's foraging, this adult silk heron returns to the nest, where the young instinctively pull at its beak, triggering an immediate regurgitation of the food from the parent. are so large here that the occasional predator, like this hawk, presents little threat to the survival of other species. From the swamps of the humid coastal plains, we move north to the uninhabited jungle regions that still remain. These forests, under the direct protection of the Malagasy government, are home to the shy lemur, the island's most distinctive animal. The lemur is not a monkey, but an ancient primate, lower on the evolutionary scale than its monkey cousin. These tree climbers with long tails were a common sight in the forests of North America and Europe over 25 million years ago. Now one must visit Madagascar to find them. The competition for food was too great in other parts of the world. Only here could they survive. There are several varieties of lemur living in Madagascar. They vary in size, color, and markings, but most are tree dwellers, rarely spending any time on the ground. They are usually active at night and sleep during the day, curled up in a hollow tree or the fork of a branch. The lemur's tail is a useful appendage. It helps the animal to balance itself as it leaps through the trees. For some species, the tail acts as a storehouse for fatty deposits to sustain the animal during hibernation. Others use it to signal in time of danger. The diet of these primates ranges from leaves, fruits and buds to insects, birds' eggs and small mammals. The search for food is a constant lifetime occupation. Lemurs breed at all seasons, except during the month of December. The females can produce but one offspring a year. The young lemur is carried on the mother's chest at first. Then, as it grows older, it may ride on her shoulders and back.
The rough lemurs live in families or tribes of from six to 20 animals. If one of the older males decides to move, all of the others follow a course set by the lead animal with a scent that comes from glands at the base of its tail. All jump over the same clearing and land in the same tree, if not on the same branch. A 20-foot leap is not uncommon. The rough lemur is thought to be a sacred sun worshiper by many Malagasy. When sunlight first touches the forest, this creature has the strange habit of sitting up and holding out its arms, as if it is praying, all the time keeping its eyes fixed on the light moving over the horizon. Considering the proximity to the equator, Madagascar's landscape is remarkably varied. Coconut palms grow in the wet, hot lowlands of the east coast. West of the central mountain range, rainfall is reduced and the climate more arid. Farther west, the hills level out towards the coast of the Mozambique Channel. The air gets drier all the time. The land is seared. Birds scavenge in the underbrush. These are cuckoos with long tails. They resemble pheasants but are native only to Madagascar. Here in the arid northwest is another species of rough lemur. It is almost totally white, except for the face. Apparently, the coloring varies with the season. These lemurs develop black markings only in the wet, humid summer. When the air becomes dry, they go white. The large expressionless eyes of these nocturnal animals were the cause of their name. The Romans used the term lemur for the restless spirits of the deceased. According to ancient belief, the lemurs wandered through the night seeking light, making woeful sounds and staring at the living. In areas of Madagascar, the lemur is still treated with the respect accorded to the spirit of a dead friend. To kill one of these animals is still taboo. But ancient beliefs are disappearing, and when the taboo loses credibility, the rural Malagasy in need of meat turn to hunting these timid creatures, knocking them from the trees with stones. When attacked, the lemur will play dead, lying motionless until the chance of escape. But its natural defenses are few, and now, despite government protection, the creature is only found in the uninhabited areas of the island. The southwest portion of Madagascar is a semi-desert with rainfall as low as 10 inches a year. Thick stalked plants cover the landscape. Botanists call them succulents. They store water in their leaves and stems. This odd plant absorbs water during the rainy season and stores it in these swellings. The natural reservoirs make these delicate flowers possible.
nature takes on elaborate and often beautiful form to adapt to this hot, arid climate. A community of weaver birds, they nest in large groups on a single tree. It seems that every branch is occupied. As they settle and build, they kill the tree in the process. It is only a matter of time before their top heavy city in the sky collapses and they must search out a new one. This is an ancient Malagasy cemetery, a city of the dead. The burial plots are decorated with totems. Carved zebu cattle are the most common images. The horns of slaughtered oxen adorn the grounds. The accumulated wealth of the deceased was traditionally buried with the body for use in the world beyond. Here in the south, some herding is possible, but only along the rivers. Away from the watercourses, huge cacti grow in the large baobab, or monkey tree. This is a forest of digeria. They look like cacti, and as protection, they are covered with thorns. They form a family of their own. This conservation area is a haven for another variety of lemur. It is adapted to a prickly environment. The animal lives in these trees. The jumps are as powerful as ever, yet the creatures manage to land unscathed. The favorite food of these southern cousins of the rough lemur is the flower and leaf of the thorny digeria, and while eating, the creatures literally sit on thorns. of Madagascar seem to have adapted extremely well to every region of their island home. They can extract available foods from every landscape and have adequate protection in their treetop habitat. in size from the two-foot-tall rough lemur to the smallest mouse lemur, only five inches long, excluding the tail. An extraordinary animal. It moves rather like a monkey, but has the face of a fox. Within historical times, only a few thousand years ago, there were many more lemurs on Madagascar Island than there are today. Fossil remains suggest over 90 species. At least one was a giant compared to the rough lemur. About 20 species have survived.
in recorded times, the lemur lived throughout the island as it once lived on other continents. But today, it is confined to isolated pockets of wilderness on the island that has become its last refuge. Will it succumb to nature's law, the survival of the fittest, and follow its continental relatives into extinction, pushed off the planet by man? Or will it be left alone in its tiny corner of a timeless, untamed world?